what is going on guys welcome to your 22nd UDK tutorial and it is now 1144 at night and I just woke up so yeah time to start making some tutorials so in this tutorial what I'm gonna be teaching you guys is how to make your own custom material and I'm gonna be showing you guys exactly how to connect those expressions with your material right here in order to give you some nice cool effects so the very first thing I want to mention is this this big box in the middle of the screen that's where we're going to be working with the most this is basically your material now all of these different attributes they're called the material channels but like I said sometimes I call them the material attributes because a material is much more than just a color or a picture there's a bunch of different things that make up your material and I'm just going to give you guys the quick tour of what all these things are the diffuse these two diffuse things are like the general overall color of your material. The emissive is the glow, the specular stuff is kind of like the shininess of it. The opacity is like how opaque or transparent or how much you can see through your material. The distortion is kind of like how light bends around your material. Whenever we're working with like water or when something's really hot and you can see those waves, we can uh, use this property right here. Uh, the transmission mask and the transmission color these have to do with how light passes through your surfaces and let's see the normal is actually one we're using quite a bit it's like the texture or the detail um, the custom lighting allows you to make your own custom uh, light function or light attribute I wanna say and all of these down here these are really the ones that we really don't use that often so these are really specific and I'm gonna be going over these later but these are your basic ones and those are your core aspects of material so as you can see a material is made up of much more than a color we get shininess glow all this cool stuff so now that with that being said these are your attributes so each attribute for example this color it needs information in order to tell our material what color it should be so like I said all of the information comes from something called an expression now in order to change the expression for the diffuse let's go ahead and find an expression I already know what one we need uh, let's go ahead and search vector parameter right here now go ahead and grab this and drag it out on the screen and now that you have this vector parameter you can see a couple things first of all before I even get to this vector parameter let me mention this I'll teach you guys how to navigate around this first of all in order to drag it's just like one of your orthographic graph views just go ahead and grab it and drag it around in order to drag one of these boxes say you want to move this expression closer to this material you can't go ahead and drag it or else the whole thing's gonna drag so what you need to do is hold control and drag it and that's probably a good position like right up there um, in order to delete it go ahead and highlight it and once it's highlighted with yellow just go ahead and hit delete on your keyboard but we don't want to delete that for now so we're just going to go ahead and drag it out and let me go ahead and control and drag that a little bit closer so now what I want to talk to you guys is about is this expression right here first of all each of these expressions have their own custom way of doing things so I already know that in order to change the color for a material we're going to use the vector parameter and I'm going to be going over all these uh, later on but for now I'm just going to show you guys a simple example of how you can connect an expression to one of the attributes so a vector is think of it as like a list of numbers so that's where we're going to use this expression because if you ever worked with color on your computer before you know that color is made up of more than one value it's made up of RGB and so you need three values so that's why we need this list right here makes sense so we can't just give it the number like seven because what the heck color is seven you need like RGB value of like you know three values basically so now I want to talk to you guys about these tabs as you can see we have tabs on the right side of this box and tabs on the left side of this box so any tabs that are on the left hand side are outputs this is where information is coming out from anytime it's on the right hand side it's an input so information always flows from right to left for example it might be easier to see if I drag this add method out here the add method or the add function it's typically called an expression but I call them functions sometimes takes two numbers aka input from A and B and it outputs one number 
simple enough pretty cool huh so that might be a little more clear to see but we don't want that in this tutorial so go ahead and delete that what this parameter function does is it just outputs numbers so if you go ahead and highlight it you can go ahead and change the values RGB so every color is made up of RGB value however in the UDK it doesn't use the default 0 to 255 it uses a value of 0 to 1 I know it's a little weird but that's how it works so go ahead and give your RGB any value from 0 to 1 like 0.75 uh, 0.5 and we'll leave this one at like 0.6 let's see how that looks so we get this nice pale looking and I'm actually just gonna go ahead and change this to 0 and ooh, that looks pretty good nice hot pink so like I said we can work with any value from 0 to 1 what we can also do is give a number greater than 1 so if we take this red and well let me go ahead and show you guys how to connect this first in order to connect this go ahead and take your black output and drag it over to the diffuse now what the black output means is this the black output in this case transmits the RGB all at once this red green and blue transmits the red green and blue data and this white one transmits the transparency those so that's why we're using the black output because we want to give it the entire list of RGB all at once and again I'm not going to be going over these parameters I just want to give you guys a basic idea of how this how these things are connected in this tutorial so don't worry if you don't quite understand that yet but basically like I was saying before these RGB values by default you should always input something from 0 to 1 but you have the ability of adding a number greater than 1 now whenever you add a number greater than one it's pretty much gonna boost that color so let's go ahead and pump this way up and add like the number 25 what this is gonna do is boost this color so it shines even outside the material so let me go ahead and itch my ear ah oh, there we go my ear is itching a little bit had to take care of that so as you can see whenever we boost the color it gives us this kind of well as you can see I don't know how to explain it other than just looking at it. It pretty much pumps color into this object or material. So it's kind of like glowing with that color. So 0 to 1 is default values, but we can pump extra color into it to give it kind of a glowing effect. So that's the basics of how you can alter different attributes with your material by giving them values via an expression. So pretty much all of these attributes need some value in order to work and the values come from these expressions now these expressions you can just go ahead and click on them and give them values or sometimes with like uh, the add expression you get two separate inputs and it calculates an output but we'll be talking about that later on for this tutorial like I said I just wanted to explain to you guys the basics of what these are and how you can connect an expression to these attributes so with that being said let me mention this before I let you guys go in order to save your material go ahead and make this checkbox right here and this has says apply changes to the original material and before I even want to mention that in order to disconnect your expression from your material go ahead and alt click one of these checkboxes and whenever you alt click it the arrow is going to disappear so that's how you disconnect it in case you guys want to know in order to connect it again just go ahead and drag and connect it so now that I want to save my changes I'm gonna go ahead and click this checkbox right here and it's gonna save my changes now I can X out of this and make sure that you save your package by having right click and save and now just like before we have our new pink material right here so what we can do is go ahead and drag and drop that on an object and check it out our new custom material is applied to this object pretty awesome huh so that's the basics of how you can connect expressions with materials again in this tutorial I want to teach you guys is how to make the connections in the next tutorial I'm gonna to be talking to you guys about all the different kinds of material we can make in all the different ways the expressions work so thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video